Hi guys, my name is Daryl Addison. I am the founder and CEO of Torpedo Pot. T-O-R-P-E-D-O-P-O-T. -O -O I'm also the founder and the CEO of Canapot. C-A-N-A hyphen P-O-T, strictly for cannabis. And I'm the founder of Agricultural Blockchain, which individuals can take their foods that they grow and throw in the blockchain and sell it globally. So we're building a huge brand new network. We're starting today to discuss with you about the torpedo pot. The torpedo pot is a self-growing planter. It grows your food for you. All you have to do is put your seeds in or put your seedlings in, walk away for the rest of the year, and it grows your food for you. You plug up a little hose in the back, you turn a knob in the front, and automatically the water goes through. The whole concept behind the torpedo pot, the why I would say about 15 cucumbers off of a small pot like this, a torpedo pot. So don't underestimate the power of your torpedo pot. Now what makes it so special? The torpedo pot has an internal plumbing system that routes water to your plants when they need them the most, okay? So it's not like pouring water into your planter. When you pour water into your planter, it's more likely 90% of the water runs down the walls and runs out the bottom of the pot. And we flush it out because we want to flush out the, uh, the dirt from impurities. But the torpedo pot, what it does, it cuts on when your plants need the water. So this comes with a timer that you can cut on and off your water. I have about, I would say about 80 pots hooked up. I have about, from each spigot, I have about 20 pots hooked up. And I'm able to uh, water the pots in the morning, or water them in the evening, or water them at nighttime, and rotate among the pots such that I can produce more food than my local farm. And that's how powerful this torpedo pot is. Remember, you put your seeds in, you put your seedlings in, and you walk away for the rest of the year and you don't have to do anything at all. It grows. Now, the thing about it, it doesn't matter what your plant is. I don't care if it's orchids. I don't care if you're growing uh, tomatoes. I don't care if you're growing cucumbers. The torpedo pot is designed not to grow any particular plant. It's designed to grow every plant. We have very different variations of the torpedo pot that uh, are used for different sizes, different types of plants, different water configurations. But for the standard planter right here, this will grow 99% of all of your growing needs you'll be able to have in this particular planter. Now, what makes this so interesting is that <clears throat> we don't grow food. All right, it grows your food for you, it grows your plants for you, but we're not in the business of growing food. We take a different approach. This pot has been designed to grow fungus. Fungus is in everything. And this little dirt right here, you might have a million uh, bacterial counts in this little uh, soil right here. And all of them are doing a specific job to break down matter so it can pr pr uh, produce food so your plants can come and get it so they can build its own environment and it can live. The reason why we chose to go with the, uh, the fungal process is because we realized a lot of people use fertilizers in their, uh, to feed their plants. And what we try to tell individuals is that fertilizer, uh, they're like a drug. What you do is that you put the fertilizer in and it goes to the plant's root system and the plant absorbs it up. But the plant is not going out and reaching and getting its food. The plant is not existing in an environment, a natural environment, where the microbes and the fungus are there to help break down those particulates and make them available to the soil. So you don't have that building soil process. You simply throw your fertilizers in, it goes up into the plant, and it's like a stimulus to make the plants behave in a certain way, not with torpedo pot. With torpedo pot, because we grow fungus, you're going to see things you've never seen before. You're going to see plants grow that you've never seen before, the abundance in the amount. And this one planter, I may put like five cucumber seeds. And because inside the planter itself, we have the mushroom soil that we like to use. The mushroom soil goes and it breaks down the bark. It tears it down for the soil to then be able to uh, uptake it through its root system. Unlike the fertilizers, like I said, that does something totally different. So we are in the process of growing fungus. So let's set that aside for one uh, minute. So we have the plumbing that distributes the water that you adjust the water to grow the fungus that feeds your plants. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the soil. <clears throat> a lot of the soil that you're getting from the store, uh, these stores, they're not really soil at all. Okay, a lot of them are infused with different chemicals to cause them to grow, 
They're infused with slow release, sustaining release. And honestly, this stuff may appear to be good and appear to be dark and, and nice, but for the most of it, your plants are eating, um, I would say, chemicals. So they're eating these chemicals. I don't want to uh, attack any one particular company. But as you can see, they have my green palace, they have vermiculite, they tried to make a, a, an environment so that the plant can, can, um, can, uh, can live. I want to assure you, your plants know how to create their own environment. They don't need you to create an environment for you. We realize that in the soil that I'm going to show you, that we prefer, it's mostly built off organic matter, okay? And so you'll find some particulars in there. But remember now, I want you to ask yourself, what do plants eat? And I ask people this question so they'll understand what's taking place. Plants eat what? Right, they eat other plants. This once was a plant that was broken down and now it is made available for the plants to eat. The nutrition that is in the walls of that plant, that was in the cells, that's in the root structure of the plant, is now broken down because all of that food is built into that matrix within that plant. So the microbes and the fungus breaks it down and makes it available to the plant so they can eat it. And what that does is that when you have the microbes and the bacteria moving in that environment, it, it creates a better soil. It creates the soil that you're looking for. Remember, ask yourself, how do you get soil? Well, that's exactly how it happens. <clears throat> the debris from the birds and the droppings and the ants and all these things get broken down. And the microbes and the bacteria go to work and, the, and all of the living organisms go to work to break down those particulates so they make available to your plants. So it's not so much the bag that I want you to get full of vermiculite and all that stuff. Drop that stuff. Get yourself some mushroom soil, some soil with some particulates in it because your plants love to eat just like you do. And to make this available to them to eat, now remember now you can make this available to them. This will be taken up into the plant system and it's made available, but it's almost like a drug, like when, when, you, when you are going to the drugstore and you're picking up drugs and you're ingesting it. It just elicits a response, a behavior from you. But uh, going down and naturally getting it is nothing like it in the world. So what we do is that we have the torpedo pot here. What you're going to get, for those who have it, you're going to get one torpedo pot, okay? And this is a self-growing planter. And what we do is that we sell it with a hose, not this particular hose, but we sell it with a timer, water timer. And we sell it with a nipple, which goes into the back of your torpedo pot and waters it. So what we did, we're simulating the torpedo pot right here. When you get your hose, you simply plug it into the back of the torpedo pot. And once I turn the water on the torpedo pot, it'll be able to... Can you come a little closer, Mr. Cameron? I want you to see what, what exactly is here. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to cut on the torpedo pot for the first time, and I want you to see what comes out and what it looks like before we put our dirt in, okay? So all your plants are going to experience this. Can you see it? Okay, let's turn this on. Oops, I gotta cut the water on from this back side here. And I gotta cut it on from this other side. Give me one minute, okay? I want you to see when it cuts on, so just bear with me one minute. Okay. Sorry, I had to go cut it on. <clears throat> I should have cut it on before, but when you cut your pot on, this is what's going to happen. Soft now. This is on. As if it simulates. So, let's cut it on. That's what your plants get. Isn't that beautiful? And that's why you don't need to have it on. It doesn't pull water through. It doesn't create crevices in the dirt system. It allows the water to go and not destroy the soil matrix. So this is what the torpedo pot does. Now, what we're going to do is set a couple of them up together in series. Now, in order to remove the hose, you push this button in right here and you pull it out. Can you see that? 
okay? You push this in and you pull this out, okay? Just make sure it's even, straighten it up, and pull it out. And as you can see, I should have cut the water off first, but I didn't, I'm sorry. So that's basically how you would actually do for the torpedo pot. Let me cut this off. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up a couple of torpedo pots in series. I don't want you to be afraid because all you have to do now is plug up the torpedo pot, turn it on, and automatically it'll do what it needs to do for you, okay? So take a look at this, this is our timer. Your water comes in through the hose, goes in through the timer. The timer can be set. I want to show you this timer because a lot of people are intimidated by timers and I don't want you to be intimidated. This is the timer that we have and it has two um, configurations. One is the how often you want it. So I want it to, to water for one hour. So every one hour and one minute, this will water. I also want to set this for two hours. So every two hours and five minutes, it will water. So every time it comes every two hours and five minutes, it will water over and over again. The battery goes inside the small compartment right here, which is AAA batteries. Once you put them in, your red light will come on. And then you set your timer for one hour, one minute. I like to do that for ceilings because it tends to take a lot. One minute is enough. And then the water goes through the hose from the uh, spigot, comes down, goes through the timer, and comes out to your torpedo pot. So you're actually setting this to cut on your torpedo pot. This is the manual system that we have in place. A lot of our automated systems, we have timers and sensors are built into the planters where they water by themselves. So what we're going to do now is set up a multiple torpedo pots, okay? So I do not want you to be intimidated. It's not hard. Watch me. I'm going to set up a number of torpedo pots in this short space. It won't take me no time at all. Probably take me less than five minutes. So I'm gonna pull out another torpedo pot. One, two, let's turn to the back here. And we're gonna put on a small one. Let's pull a small one, we can take a look at it, okay? A small one. And now we're going to set them up. So what I normally do is that your first torpedo pot is open. You hook your first hose to the back of the torpedo pot, okay? Now, let's follow the trail of the water. We want water to come in here we want it to come in here, and we want water to come in here. So this is the first torpedo pot, is this right here. So from here, this will go directly to, well, let's just put it directly in here, right? So this will go directly into the base of the planter. So your timer goes into one. Now the question is, how can we get the timer to go to the second one? We have one of the T's here, and let's pull this out right here, because I'm going to go to the second one put my T in there like that and my timer in the back of here just like that and now I've got one pot hooked up. Now I'm going to put a second T and I'm going to take out this nipple that's to protect it when you're transporting the pot. Put it aside. I'm going to put in a second T. All right and now I'm going to do it from side to side. I also provide a cutter so you can cut it down to size if you need it. So we'll transfer from here to here, and we'll do another one from there to here. So basically you have three planters set up in series right now, okay? And once you cut on the water, these three planters will come on. So let's take a look at this. If you can come over and take a look at all three of these planters, you can see exactly what's happening. And right now, you've just set up your whole system, okay? You've got three planters that are working. Remember now, your timer is allowing the water to come in. You have the dials on each one of these, okay? Your dials can be turned up or turned down. For instance, for this planter, because it's a smaller one, I normally turn the dial down, so it doesn't need a lot of water. These two might want a little bit more water, and I balance it out. And I might turn it up to uh, the uh, controller, the knob up or down too, to be able to do that. So I'm going to cut the water on now, and we're going to see what happens, okay? Okay, I'm going to pull this out and put my demo in there and push it in. All right, and I think this is off, that is off, and I want you to go with me and watch me turn them on. Are you ready? I'm going to turn this on first, allow the water to come through, and let's take a look at it again. This is the first one to come on. This is the second one to come on. 
This is the third one to come on. So, you could have as many as I have on one spigot. As many as, um, uh, I would say about, on one spigot, maybe it's been 40, 40 different pots on one spigot. So I put as much as I want. So this is the demo for setting up the planner. Um, I'm going to put the dirt in. I, I don't like to use this, but because it was a bag of dirt, I want you to try to get mushroom soil as much as possible, okay? Because your plants need some fiber to eat off of. Having little, as you can see from the soil, I want to show you something. All right, come here, let me show you this. Can you come a little bit closer, please? You see all these additives that were brought into the soil? You don't want that in your food, okay? This is just a mixed fertilized mixture of soil that's already been breaking down. The plants normally break this soil down. The soil you're looking at right now, after one year or two years, it'll look like that, okay? And so you don't want all these additives in your, your, uh, your soil, because it's not really soil. There's chemicals mixed in with your soil to give them a drug <clears throat> to elicit a response. So when you put your soil inside the pot, I'm going to do it so that you can see it itself. This is how you would actually fill your pot up and plug it up. So let me just get these pots filled up, push it in, pull it out, and let's pull them down. And let's get a pot set up for you, okay? So here's one pot here. And now, now, when you, let's put the soil in first so we can actually see what's going on. Move all this aside here. And let's start filling this with soil. Now, as I said, it's great. I'm using the soil. I don't recommend it, okay? Because your, your, your plant has its own fungal mechanism. And so it will grow its own food. We don't need all of that. But because uh, I'm doing it for you guys, I'm going to put it in here. So this, just fill it up with dirt in this case with soil in this case. And I just add it. So, just fill it up as much as possible. What I'll do is I'm filling up for your, you guys so you can see it, but I'm gonna take this out and put in some uh, Really good soil. I like to use my cup. It's actually better. It's faster. So as you see, I would say about a half a bag or three quarters of a bag will, uh, I three quarters of a bag will fill it up. Now, <clears throat> this is how I normally set my plants up. So now, once you put your soil, you cover that black feeding stick, okay? I want you to cover the black feeding stick, okay? Because that's where your nutrients are gonna come in and start feeding your plants. Now, <clears throat> people ask me, and say, Daryl, can I put seeds in my planter? <coughs> Daryl, can, um, can I put plants in my planter? Well, your torpedo pot can grow using seeds or seedlings. It doesn't make a difference. Let me get some uh, nasturtium seeds for you. Give me one minute. The nasturtium plant is completely edible. You can eat the roots, you can eat the leaves, you can eat the stems. It is completely edible and it's absolutely delicious. It has a great uh, peppery taste to it. I love the flowers. Last year we must have grew over uh, probably about a thousand flowers from nasturtium. Now, once I put my nasturtium seeds in here, take a look at this, come a little bit closer. I want you to see where I'm gonna put my seeds at. If you want to get immediate germination, Put it around the feeding stick, okay? Now, you can put them in the middle, they will, they will activate themselves and germinate a little bit later, okay? But mostly put them around the feeding stick. Now, the seeds you see me putting in for this nasturtium, they come back on their own every year, okay? So once I did that, I just put dirt or soil on top of this, and, and it's on its own. Once the pot cuts on, the seeds will get activated and they should germinate in nine to 10 days, and you have them all in the soil. You don't have to any, do any supplements or nothing else. It's all taken care of right there. Now, 
for plants. Let me show you how to do plants now. This is a plant that was in my planter from last year. And uh, it grew back over the winter time. This is my uh, cabbage. When you have plants, I don't care what plant it is, instead of taking your plants when you buy them from the Home Depot or whatever you're purchasing your plants from, <coughs> you put them on the side before you put them in the ground, just take your plants and put them in the torpedo pot. That's all you have to do. All right? Once the torpedo pot is activated and cuts on through the timer, it will automatically water your plants by themselves. One last thing, I want to tell you the benefits of growing from seeds and having uh, plants themselves. The reason why I recommend the plants is because the plants will give you immediate nutrition. If you do it from seeds, you're going to have to germinate, you're going to have to wait for it. It may take you 30 days, it may take you 60 days, depending upon what you're growing. <clears throat> but when you have a plant that's about, um, about 12 inches or 6 inches, once you drop it into a torpedo pot, it's going to take it two days to catch. A minimum one day to two days to catch. And once the plant catches and you feel comfortable about it and you see that the leaves are responding and it's facing towards the sun, and then automatically you can still start picking off your leaves and, and having a delicious meal. So the torpedo pot is no joke. You can actually pick off the leaves and do it until your seasons are over with, until the plant folds at the end of the season. So this is the, the torpedo pot, Darrell Addison. And again, you're going to get planters you're going to get connectors. Some of you will get plastic uh, cap uh, attachment hoses. Some of you will get a timer. Others will get the brass connector. But however you get, one thing you're going to guarantee with the torpedo pot is that <clears throat> the torpedo pot is designed to feed you and you will eat and you will be healthy. There are no fertilizers. We don't require any fertilizers with any of our planters because it will do everything you need it to do. Sharon, is there anything I missed during this? Uh, you like to ask a question about? The plants, do the plants have to go around the, the edge also? Yeah, okay. once, if it's feeding, this is a small planter. So I'm in this planter, I might put five cabbage plants inside of it and I'll put it around the edge. I'm not worried about because they're gonna come out and they're, they're gonna be healthy. Most of your um, vegetative growth um, that doesn't bloom and, and uh, that may flower, um, most of them require a lot of nitrogen for your vegetative growth. They require a lot of phosphorus. The nitrogen is already, remember I told you that inside the particulates, there's already nitrogen built up into the body matrix of this woody substance here. Once you put it in it, it gets broken down and made available to the plants. So we take it and we put it around the edge of the circle here. We don't necessarily put it in the middle, but we put it in the middle because the edge will, will go out to the sides. So, so yes, I would put it around the uh, feeding stick and the feeding stick should be able to give your nutrients, the plants that it needs. Inside the back torpedo pot, not only can you deliver water, but you also can deliver supplements. So the nitrogen is already there. The phosphorus is the result of bacteria inside the plot. It's there. The only thing you may be, when you start to overlay at your planter with uh, hundreds of plants, like in this small planter, like I said, uh, one cucumber plant I think did about 15 cucumbers. And so I can put three or four cucumber plants inside of this. And some of our pots, we put 100 cucumber plants just to see what will happen. We test these planters. And so we know the nitrogen is there. We know the phosphorus is there. When you overload your plant, you might want to put in a little bit of potassium because um, potassium uh, is very beneficial to fruiting and blooming. The blooms will come, but the fruiting, you want enough potassium to kick it over. The plant absorbs that potassium and it carries it through its leaves and literally uh, tries to make it available, but it uses up potassium extremely, extremely fast. But for those who want to produce a lot of food with blooming, like for instance, you want to do squash, you want to do eggplant. We have planters that uh, are a little bit bigger than this, next size up. I think this is the 12 inch. We had a 16, 20 inch planter. We're able to do 35 eggplants for one 16 inch planter. <coughs> for the 24 inch planter, we're able to do 30 pounds of parsley, curled parsley. We at Torpedo Pot are in the business of growing things. Sarah, is there any more questions that I have missed you'd like to ask? Okay. My name is Darrell Addison at TorpedoPot.com, and I wish you guys a happy, merry growing season. Thank you for your time.